Good afternoon, my name is Duran Dunn and I'm the Director of Finance or Revenue Management here at Graphic Packaging. I am so excited to speak to Eric Moses, the first black president of a NASCAR track, specifically at the Nashville Super Speedway, this afternoon here in Atlanta, to talk with him about how do you actually create authentic relationships, how do you build those relationships and then optimize them for your personal and professional development as well as your as, as well as career advancement. I'm Eric Moses, the president of the Nashville Super Speedway, and I'm here at Graphic Packaging International, a Fortune 500 manufacturing company based in Atlanta. Really pleased to be here to have an engaging conversation about my professional journey, kind of some personal opinions about how I got where I am, and about issues of diversity. Really happy that companies like this are taking this on uh, head on and having these kinds of conversations, both internally, but with outside speakers like myself. We're all here to learn from each other, and uh, I'm happy to be here and really excited about the conversation. Two months ago, right, when I set on the journey to kind of figure out and learn about NASCAR, I realized I really knew nothing much, right? And I know just a bit t today, and I can't imagine that, you know, for those who don't know much about NASCAR, what I'd like to do, just kind of for starters, we're going to show a quick, real video, and then maybe, Eric, you could come in on the back end of that yeah. and maybe give an overview of NASCAR. Like, just tell us a little bit about the sport before we get I'm into it. I'm happy you got it to work. So yeah, I'd, I'd love that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It has been 37 years since cup racing in Nashville. And now NASCAR is back. These fans are here, Rick. They are pumped up and glad to be back racing here at Nashville Super Speedway. Think about NASCAR, the organization, which is headquartered in Daytona, Florida, with another headquarters in, in Charlotte, um, as the NFL or Major League Baseball, right? It's the sanctioning body, the governing body that determines the competitors, the rules, the schedules, what teams are able to participate, all of those things that give you a touring circuit, which is essentially what we are, kind of like golf. Right, you go, there are no home games. We're moving around the country every week, starting in February and going to November when we end our season. Um, NASCAR also owns 12 of the venues where our highest level of competition occurs, and that's our NASCAR Cup Series level. That's where Richard Petty ran, that's where our defending champion Kyle Larson competes, and Bubba Wallace, and Chase Elliott, uh, and, and others. Uh, the company that I work for now, Speedway Motorsports Inc., uh, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, is the other kind of behemoth in the space. Uh, they own, now with uh, recent acquisition of Dover Motorsports, who I originally worked for, uh, they own 11 racetracks, uh, 10 of which will host Cup Series races, and, uh, and also own a radio network and have essentially tried to mirror what the France family and NASCAR have done. So the France family with NASCAR, the Smith family with SMI, uh, essentially run our sport. And so while we were just acquired uh, about four weeks ago by, by Speedway Motorsports, uh, I'm very happy about that, even though it means more change, because now we are part of one of the two entities that really determine what happens in the sport. Before, as an independent, we were frankly too small to control our destiny. And so I think this is going to bode really well for us in Nashville, but also for the sport. To give you a little more of the ecosystem, the teams, Hendrick Motorsports, Penske, they employ the drivers and the engineers and the mechanics and all the people who get the car ready to put it out on the track to compete. Um, the drivers are essentially employees of the teams. Uh, the drivers are the ones we all know about, but it's that 40 or more people in the shop, in the race shop, all of which are, are located outside of Charlotte in North Carolina. This was news to me when I joined the, uh, the industry, having spent eight years in North Carolina going to school and being educated there, had no idea that the entire industry was right down the road in Charlotte. But that's where everybody is. And so, so that's essentially kind of the ecosystem. And then from week to week, starting in a couple weeks in February in Los Angeles, uh, we get our season started. We go from February until November. And so, as I like to say, NASCAR is, is like the circus. They bring the circus to town, and we put up the big top, and, uh, and, and we make things happen uh, for, for that particular tour stop. So hopefully that helps to orient uh, the group and everybody understand where we are. Hi, I'm Jewel Johnson. I am president of the Black Employee Global Network at Graphic Packaging. I think today's event was great. Um, Eric is a great speaker. He is um, definitely someone with a lot of experience 
moving within the public eye and building relationships. And he has a lot of knowledge that he can instill in those coming up the ranks um, today. I mean, he took a big risk leaving everything he knew to move to another part of the country, an industry that he was not familiar with um, and that he had to learn. Uh, and so I think taking that leap of faith when opportunities are presented is something we can all learn because most of us are probably risk adverse. And so being able to step out on faith like that can have you know great rewards. Yeah, Steve Sugar, boy, what a great experience to listen to Eric, let him share his experiences with us, both personal, business, life. Uh, such a wonderful balance in his approach to caring for people, being your authentic self, caring for others, showing interest in others. I thought he just did a phenomenal job of sharing not only his experiences, but how they can uh, work in all of our lives to, to better us personally, as well as that uh, which we do around business. So thank him very, very much. Yeah. So I love your concept about common ground but I've, I've got to push that a little bit further, sure. right? Does that look different, right? This whole, you know, bring yourself, being authentic to work, if you're a minority, whether it be woman, black, do, do you find yourself, you said, hey, you bring your whole self to work, or you bring in the entire blackness, or you bring in yourself, or were you finding yourself wearing kind of two faces between work and home? No, I'm, I, I show up as me wherever I am. I, I remember the first year at my law firm um, uh, asking the partner, the junior partner that I work for, I was wearing a goatee like I am now because my face looks better with more covering uh, on it. Me, me and, too. Uh, <laughs> um, and I said, do you, because you know, I never worked in a law firm before. I, I didn't know. I said, is it going to be an issue if I wear my goatee? You know, places like Disney, you couldn't have any facial hair or the New York Yankees are the same way. Um, he said to me, he said, I don't care if you wear, I don't care if you wear an Afro like Link from Odd Squad, as long as you get your work done, right? <laughs> Which uh, I'm dating myself with that reference to the Mod Squad. Um, but yeah, but you know, had he said something different and had I not felt comfortable in that setting being able to talk about things that, that affected me as a man of color in that environment, you know, I may have had an issue. I mean, it was a year or two after that that I went to the Million Man March, and I had the same conversation with him then, that I said, okay, I'm leaving work because the march is, you know, up there and I'm going to it. You good with that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, like, go and do that. I just try to be me wherever I am. Yeah. I let others be them, right? And, and I don't, nowadays in particular, and I hope not to offend anybody with this, so many of us are so easily triggered by so many things. And look, if I chose to be triggered, I could be triggered all the time, every day, but I don't choose to come to the world that way. I choose to give people the benefit of the doubt until they give me reason not to. Um, and I choose, like I said, try to find common ground, but I, I don't occupy spaces where I have to check my blackness at the door. I, I just, I, I, I refuse to do it, I won't do it. And if I find that I have to, that's not the place for me. Hi, I'm Lori Kaczynski. I'm Vice President of Internal Audit and Chief Audit Executive. And I'm so excited to have been at this event today with our BRG Black group. It's, it's very exciting to me because I also am the executive sponsor for our Women's at GPI group, which has been moving fast and far ahead. We are already testing out some leadership training for the women's group, but this was very exciting. I am all for everybody bringing their self everywhere they go, including their jobs. And I loved some of the things Eric said today about being authentic and being in the space. And I also personally had situations where I wasn't always welcome in the space. So um, I've worked my whole career in industrial and uh, manufacturing space and was always sort of different than the majority years ago. But it's so nice to see our industry as a whole reaching out to every kind of person. Yeah, I'm Mark Kessner and I'm the VP of Talent, Learning and Diversity and Inclusion. Oh, today was incredible. I mean, Eric did such a really nice job talking about authenticity, what it means to uh, put yourself out there, to face challenges, um, how you take risks, um, and just really being your whole self um, within an organization. And I think that was a very powerful message for our um, employees to hear. So diversity for me is really about presence and participation. 
Uh, and my dream for NASCAR as a sport and as an industry and a business is really to have much more presence and participation for people uh, from diverse backgrounds, whether that's in our pits, whether that's in upper management, whether that's behind the wheel, uh, or whether that's in our sponsors and our other stakeholders, our broadcast partners, the entire ecosystem of NASCAR. We're looking to have more presence and more participation from people of color and women and, and others who maybe traditionally hadn't been as involved. One of the big takeaways for me from what Eric shared along his journey was that the first thing he always sought to do was find common ground. And that could mean simply by the schools you attended, where you find common interest. And again, that's irrespective of your, your color and your background and your experiences. But just simply finding common ground to connect with folks. And here's the interesting piece, that we actually can all do it, whether or not you're an extrovert or an introvert. One of the other points that he shared that if you're an introvert, you can actually connect with other introverts. Find those pointed opportunities, connect with individuals, and you'll just be so surprised that if you're listening to folks, connecting with folks, um, and building relationships, how far that can take you, again, from a personal development perspective, a, a professional development perspective, and just really advancing your career. So let's talk more NASCAR. We'd so love you've, to. You've, you've got this uh, great relationship, and now you've got a great opportunity in front of you. Um, and oftentimes in the workplace, right, we we get opportunities and we wonder, should we say yes or no, or you know, get some counsel in terms of which way to go. You've been in DC for 20 plus years. It's 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 what you knew, right? Yeah. Why take on a role in a new city, Middle Tennessee, um, outside of Nashville, uh, in a sport that you knew, you know, at the time very little about? and move all the way across co the country to take on this particular role. Why yes to that opportunity? Again, kind of like I said earlier, middle of a pandemic, not knowing where the industries are gonna be, great opportunity, great place to live. But you could have taken on any other role in DC, potentially, right? Or even Yeah, I mean, potentially, States. but um, a lot of it had to do with timing. And, and I also, I like the challenge of building things. I like the challenge of starting things, repositioning organizations, like that's kind of what I do. Um, I'm a lawyer by training, but I'm a big picture person who can also do details. And so, you know, if, um, if I have any, you know, superpower, people asking these kinds of things, what's your superpower? Um, if I have any superpower, it is seeing the connections between people, ideas, concepts, and strategies to bring those things together. You know, I, I like to say, I, I wanna try to figure out how we make two plus two equal five and not four. And so you get to do that when you're in charge of running a, a whole organization. You get to look for the places to drive efficiencies, look for the places to, to get more out of less, and, um, and to put the pieces together in a way that, that's going to help you be successful. And, and that's the part of it that I like. And that, this was that kind of, is that kind of challenge, taking a place that had been dormant for 10 years in a place where they love what we do. Like I was bringing people a sport that they like. It's not like, you know, they were sending me to, I don't know, um, you know, some place where nobody knew about NASCAR or liked it or anything. There was a reason to believe if we got it right, we'd be well received. Um, and I'm a son of the South. I was born in North Carolina. I spent eight years there being educated. I like the South. You know, I, I, I like the fact that people are cordial. I like that people say, hey, you know, I, I, I enjoy that. And so it just had all of the indicia of an opportunity where I could be successful. Um, and I like to challenge myself. And so um, I thought this was the right thing at the right time. I, I did not know taking the job that I was going to be the first. That happened in the last conversation Mike and I had in Nashville, in fact, uh, at the Hermitage Hotel. We were having dinner and he said, oh, by the way, if, if you decide to do this, you'll be the first person who looks like you that's ever done this before in our industry. And I went, oh, OK. All right. Um, 73 but, years, right? So at the time, years it was 73 history, years. Right? Yeah. And so, so that wasn't something that made me go, oh, yeah, but it also wasn't lost on me the opportunity I would have in being the first. And I called uh, other mentors and sponsors of mine and said, what do you think about this? What do you think about this opportunity? Is this the right thing for me at this stage in my career? Does this make sense? Can I build on this in a way that helps me to get to the next thing and the next thing? Um, and, the, and the answer came back, yes. And given the moment that we were, are in, given all that is happening in our country and the kind of racial reckoning that we're having in our society, um, 
I thought it presented an outsized opportunity to have discussions like this and others inside an industry and a sport that could probably benefit from it. Great conversation with the folks here at Graphic Packaging International. Really, really glad to have been invited here um, and, and to be able to speak to so many of their employees and team members, including um, their top, top executives that were, that were in the room here and many others who joined us virtually. Great conversation. I enjoyed being here. Really attentive group. And, uh, and hopefully there are a few things that were shared that, that people can take some inspiration from uh, and utilize in their own lives and their own careers. I had a ball having my conversation with Eric. Uh, we learned a lot around, around his experience, how he leveraged uh, building his relationships, how he meet individuals. Simply put, just how he found common ground with people irrespective of their race or creed. And that's really what it's about. Um, we had almost a thousand people uh, in attendance, so that, that was definitely exciting as well. And uh, we're just appreciative of, of Eric taking the time out to share his journey along the way. And we're looking forward to, to what he's going to do, not only um, at the, the, the Nashville Super Speedway, but what he's going to do across the NASCAR platform and transcend sport and build in further diversity, equity, inclusion in that sport.